Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, in the matchless name of Yahushua Mashiach. This is Yahweh's servant, Reginald M. Graham. And we're delighted to be able to come to you once again with another message from the word of Yahweh. This is Come Out of Her, My People broadcast with your host, Reginald M. Graham. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I say this on all of my, most of my previous broadcasts. This uh, broadcast is not for the faint of heart, ladies and gentlemen. This broadcast is dedicated and devoted to those that want to know the truth, ladies and gentlemen. The Bible tells us in the book of John, chapter 8, verse 32, Yahushua declared, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I am um, elated, once again, delighted to be able to come to you with another message from the word of Yahweh. For the Bible says in Matthew chapter uh, 24, verse 14, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for witness to all nations, and then shall the end come. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to get right into our message uh, just evening. Ladies and gentlemen, who are the Edomites today? Who are the Edomites in today's world? Who are the descendants of Esau today? These questions are so often asked and debated. This is a result of two main schools of thoughts that have emerged in these end times. One is that Esau, Edom, are people of European descent or the white race. And the other is that Esau are the Arabs. Reading the Bible and realizing that one is a descendant of Esau is not a pleasant feeling. When it is stated that Esau is a particular people that typical responds, ladies and gentlemen, it, in other words, it says, uh, when it is stated that Esau is a particular individual, ladies and gentlemen, in the scripture. And people typically respond to you as being racist. This therefore creates noise with the effect of totally ignoring the truth of who the descendants of Esau are today. I am not a racist. I want to get that point across. Neither do I believe all Edomites are doomed. But I believe, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be held accountable if we don't tell people the truth. Many times when you declare truth, people will call you a bigot or a racist. But ladies and gentlemen, uh, we have a responsibility to declare the truth to the people. Ladies and gentlemen. I am not those who hate the children of Esau, which is forbidden in the Torah, ladies and gentlemen. Deuteronomy 23 and 7 declares, Thou shalt not abhor an Edomite, for he is thy brother. Now, what if I know the truth and do not speak it? The Bible tells us there is a severe judgment hanging over Edom. And most Edomites do not know what is waiting for them. Ladies and gentlemen, Malachi 1 verses 2 through 4 declares, I have loved you, says Yahweh, yet ye say, wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, says Yahweh, yet I love Jacob. And I hated Esau and laid his mountains in his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Whereas Edom says, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus says Yahweh of hosts, they shall build, but I will throw down, and they shall call them the border of wickedness. And the people against whom Yahweh have indignation forever. 
Wow, ladies and gentlemen, we see here that Yahweh has indignation forever for the descendants of Esau. Why is it extremely important that we know who are the descendants of Esau today? But why is it important that we know who are the modern day descendants of Esau in these end times? When one gets a deep understanding of the word of Yahweh, one will see that Esau will be the one ruling this earth in the end time. Genesis 27 verses 38 through 40 declares, And Esau said unto his father, Hast thou but one blessing, my father? Bless me, even me also, O my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. And Isaac, his father, answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth and of the dew of heaven from above. And by thy sword shall thou live and shall serve thy brother. And it shall come to pass when thou shalt have the dominion that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. Notice here that Isaac blessed Esau and told him that his dwelling would be the fatness of the earth and of the dew of heaven, signifying here that Esau and his descendants would prosper and would be very wealthy. And that in the latter times, Esau and his descendants would have dominion over the earth and would break Jacob and his descendants' yoke from off their neck. Notice here in verse 40 that Esau and his descendants shall live by the sword. Listen to that. Shall Esau and his descendants shall live by the sword. They will be a violent, brutal people. Giving us a clue here who the Edomites are today. Giving us a clue. What <clears throat> race of people today live by the sword? What group of people today, ladies and gentlemen, are very violent and very brutal. Well, we're giving you a clue. And second, Asherah 6 and 9, it declares, for Esau is the end of the world or, or, this, or, or this age. And, es and Jacob is the beginning of it that follows. It will also help to confirm who the children of Israel are because of the perpetual hatred that Esau has for Israel. Obadiah 18 declares, And the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau for stubble, and they shall kindle in them and devour them. And there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, for Yahweh have spoken it. We see here in Obadiah 18, Yahweh's severe judgment on the house of Esau in these end times. Yahweh, Yahweh will completely annihilate the descendants of Esau in these end times. As we go on in this teaching, I will prove that Esau descendants in these end times will be a certain will be certain groups of people of European descent. Let me say that again. As we go on in this teaching, I will prove that Esau descendants and these end times will be certain groups of people of European descent, ladies and gentlemen. Notice here in Obadiah 18, Yahweh said there will be no Edomites, ladies and gentlemen, no descendants of Esau remaining. Yahweh is going to annihilate, ladies and gentlemen, Esau's descendants, the Edomites. Esau will be the nation of people, <coughs> excuse me, who are ruling the world and they will have 
an obvious perpetual hatred for one nation of people. In Jazra 58 and 28, let me say this. The Bible speaks of, in the book of 2 Samuel, concerning the book of Jazra, ladies and gentlemen, in the Apocrypha. And I'm going to read a scripture here out of the Apocrypha. I believe, ladies and gentlemen, that the majority of the Apocrypha is reliable today. But in Jezreel 58 and 28 declares, but from that day forward, the children of Esau hated and enmity were very strong between them all the days unto this day. So just as to the world, there is no clear cut indication as to where the children of Israel are today, so also to the world, there is also no indication as to where the children of Esau or the Edomites are today. <clears throat> but to Yahweh's chosen remnant, they are not blind to whose Esau descendants are in these end times. Yahweh's remnant, his elect, his chosen, ladies and gentlemen, they know who Esau descendants are, ladies and gentlemen. They have no doubt, no reservation, ladies and gentlemen, who Esau descendants are. Stay with me tonight. The word of Yahweh tell us that Esau, ladies and gentlemen, is bare and will not be able to hide. So how can he be hidden from the elect, ladies and gentlemen, of Yahweh. Jeremiah 49 and 10 declares, but I have made Esau bare. I have uncovered his secret places and he shall not be able to hide himself. His seed is spoiled and his brethren and his neighbors and he is not. So if he shall not be able to hide how can he be hidden from Yahweh's remnant? Who are the Edomites today? Esau is bare, and Yahweh have uncovered his secret places, and he shall not be able to hide himself. Now, Esau is bare. That means he's plain to see. His secret places are uncovered. He shall not be able to hide himself. Ladies and gentlemen, his spoil, ladies and gentlemen, will be mingled with other nations, the scripture tells us. He is not means, here, he is not means in Jeremiah 49 and 10, ladies and gentlemen, it means he seems to have vanished, ladies and gentlemen, not seen for how he originally looked or where he originally dwelled, ladies and gentlemen. So he doesn't look like he originally looked, ladies and gentlemen. He have somewhat vanished, praise Yahweh. But Yahweh's true remnant know who Esau is. He is not means here in Jeremiah 49 and 10. He seems to have vanished, not seen for how he originally looked or where he originally dwelled. In other words, Esau did a disappearing act on us all, but he cannot be hidden because his nature, because of his nature. Remember, Ladies and gentlemen, he shall live by the sword. So it's very easy to identify Esau today in these end times, ladies and gentlemen. Matter of fact, Yahweh said he was going to make them bare. Uh, Yahweh said he was going to uncover his secret, secret places, ladies and gentlemen, and he would not be able to hide himself. Glory to Yahweh. And it's very obvious today who Esau is because 
Remember in Genesis 27, Isaac blessed him and told him he shall live by the sword. Now, uh, Esau descendants, the Edomites, will be a brutal, a very violent people that will live by a sword, ladies and gentlemen, glory to Yahweh, that will murder and kill and enslave, ladies and gentlemen, and oppress and rape and, and, and confiscate, ladies and gentlemen, and sack, amen. This is how he will live. He will live by the sword, a very violent, a very brutal, individual, ladies and gentlemen. So let us see where the mingling of Esau's seed really is manifested. It started when Esau took wives of the children of Canaan. Esau married Canaanite women. He married two Canaanite women. Genesis 27 and 46 declares, and Rebekah said to Isaac, I am weary of my life because of the daughters of Heth. If Jacob take a wife of these, which are of the daughters of the land, what good shall my life do to me? Esau, ladies and gentlemen, took Canaanite women and married them. And the Bible said it was a grief, a man, to Isaac and Rebekah for Esau, their eldest son, ladies and gentlemen, marrying these Canaanite, Canaanite women. Now in the book of Jezer 90 verses seven through nine declares, and the children of Shedom continued their pursuit of Edom and they smote them with a great slaughter. And Edom became subject to the children of Shittim. Ladies and gentlemen, we see the word Shittim in the scriptures. And we're going to see who the children of Shittim are. And the children of Shittim ruled over Edom. Listen to this. They conquered them. They slaughtered them. Now we see the children of Shedom ruled over Edom, and Edom became under the hand of the children of Shedom and became one kingdom from that day. And from that time, they could no more lift up their hand, and their kingdom became one with the children of Shedom. Now listen to this. Edom was eventually conquered by Shittim. The Shittim are the Romans, the Greeks, ladies and gentlemen, but in particular, the Romans. The chief ones was the Romans. The chief children of Shittim was the Romans. The Romans conquered, ladies and gentlemen, Edom with a great slaughter. And the Bible tells us that Shedom, Rome, ruled over Edom, and Edom became under the hand of the children of Chedom, these Europeans. And from that time, they could no more lift up their heads, and their kingdom became one with the children of Chedom. Their kingdoms became one. They became one people, ladies and gentlemen, these two nations became one. Glory to Yahweh. And the children of Edom, ladies and gentlemen, became subject to Rome. They submitted to Rome and they became one. They assimilated among the Romans, ladies and gentlemen, and they became one kingdom. Remember that. That's very important for you to remember that the Edomites were conquered, amen, by the Romans. The Bible says, amen, uh, it was a great slaughter, a great slaughter in the book of Jasher. It was a great slaughter, ladies and gentlemen. And Edom could never lift up his hand again against the children of Shechem, ladies and gentlemen. And they became one 
kingdom, ladies and gentlemen. They, came, they became as one people. Edom assimilated amongst the Romans, and they became one people, ladies and gentlemen. Shedom are the Romans, Greeks, Macedonians, and Cypriots, who are currently, who are the current day Edomites. Indeed, it is really not hard to see who Esau descendants are today. <clears throat> As a matter of fact, it is easier to find the descendants of Edom than it is to find the children of Israel in these end times. By now, you should know who the descendants of Esau are in these end times. Job 9 and 24 declares, the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covers the faces of the judges thereof, if not where and who is he? The Bible tells us here in Job 9 and 24, it declares the earth is given into the hands of the wicked. We know the Bible says that Satan is the God of this world. And the scripture says this world is given into the hands of the wicked, ladies and gentlemen. So the earth is in the hands of the wicked. Now, the next relevant question is, who is the chief of the wicked of this earth, according to the Bible? Edom is, the scripture says. The Edomites are. Esau is ruling the earth today. So if the world is given into the hand of the wicked, and Malachi 1 and 4 declares Esau shall be called the border of wickedness. Then who are the Edomites today? Surely it is not the Arabs. Many say that the Edomites are the Arabs, ladies and gentlemen. The Arabs have wealth, but only control the oil wealth of the world. They do not have control of the world. The world is not in the Arabs' hands, but the world is in the hands of the people of European descent. Now listen, Edom and the Romans and the Greeks, ladies and gentlemen, the Macedonians, they became one people. They became one, one kingdom. Um, Edom was uh, uh, subdued, was conquered by, ladies and gentlemen, the Romans. And they submitted to the Romans and they joined with the Romans, ladies and gentlemen. They became one kingdom, one nation with the Romans. Edom became one. Edom assimilated amongst the Romans. That's a very important point, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> now, the Arabs, <clears throat> even though uh, the land of Edom in the beginning, the land of Esau, was there in the so-called Middle East, they call it today, ladies and gentlemen. And right, right under a man, Israel, was Edom. Right in the, if you, if you will look at if you will locate Edom today in, in modern times, it would be Jordan, the part of most of Jordan, that area. But this is why a lot of people confuse, ladies and gentlemen. And one time in my life, I was confused. I thought that the Arabs were the Edomites, ladies and gentlemen. But the Edomites were conquered by the Romans. They were slaughtered, ladies and gentlemen, and they... Uh, submitted to the Romans, they never lifted up their hands again against the Romans, the children of Cheatham, ladies and gentlemen. Now listen, and they became one kingdom. And so the Edomites, the children of Esau, assimilated amongst the Romans. 
ladies and gentlemen, and they became one kingdom. Second Ezra 6 and 9 declares, for Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that follows. <clears throat> if Esau is the end of the world or the end of the age, it means Edom will be ruling this age until Jacob takes over to start the coming age. So you know who is ruling this age today. It's the white man. That's Edom, friend. That's who Edom is. I want to bring out a point. When, when Esau was born, he was the eldest son. It was twins. Uh, Rebecca had twins. Yahweh told her she had two nations in her womb. And she, Yahweh said, the youngest will rule the elder. Esau came out first. Jacob came out, amen, afterwards. They struggled in the room. Both of them were struggling. They, the scriptures say these babies struggled in the womb. These twins struggled in the womb. Ladies and gentlemen. And the Bible say when Esau was born, he looked a totally different. <laughs> he looked a totally different from his brother, brother Jacob. He came out hairy, the Bible say, like a hairy garment. He came out red and like a hairy gun. He came out red and like a hairy gun. Let me ask you a question. What group of people today, what race of people got red hair? And they very hairy. Talk to me, somebody. What group of people today are red? Yeah. And they're very hairy, ladies and gentlemen. It's the white man. What color is the white? You see them, they look red. Many times they look red. They called the Native Americans the red man, but they looked at more red than the Native Americans, ladies and gentlemen. It's the Caucasians. That's right. The white race of people. This who it is, ladies and gentlemen. They got red hair. A lot of them got the Irish, got red hair. And uh, in Sweden, they got red hair. A lot of them got red hair. And in... And, 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 um, UK, red hair, because they are descendants of Esau. Esau assimilated among the Europeans, ladies and gentlemen. So if Esau is the end of this age, it means Edom will be ruling this age in the end times, and Jacob will take over in the coming age. So Esau is in control. He got all the money. He got all the wealth, ladies and gentlemen. Glory to Yahweh. And he lived by the sword. He survived. He lived by killing, by murdering, ladies and gentlemen, by pillaging, by sacking, by confiscating, by raping, stealing, and enslaving. He lived by the sword, by fighting. He's a violent, by nature, his nature is violent and brutal. He has a violent and a brutal nature, ladies and gentlemen. The Edomites today are the wicked of the earth. And it is important to note they rule with a sword and they are extremely greedy and will take everything and leave others with nothing. It's a prophecy concerning this. Here we are told about the nature, ladies and gentlemen, of Esau. And he is never satisfied. He's covetous. He's his nature. He wants always to take. He's like a parasite. He's taken from every, like a leech, a bloodsucker, taken from everybody and leaving others with nothing, ladies and gentlemen. He is never content, ladies and gentlemen. He's never satisfied. Glory to Yahweh. He wants more, wants more. And he will use his sword to take more. He conquered lands. He colonized lands, ladies and gentlemen. Took their lands, took Africa, carved up Africa, just took Africa, took India, took the Philippines, ladies and gentlemen. Took, took 
the, almost the whole world, he colonized it, ladies and gentlemen. Took it for himself. Took the U.S. Took America. Took South America. Took it for himself. The Spaniards con conquistadors, ladies and gentlemen. They, they took it for themselves. That's his nature. He lived by the sword. Esau lived by the sword. If you want to identify who the children of the Edomites are today, it's the people that live by the sword. It's the people that are greedy, that are super rich, wealthy, and take from everybody else. Ladies and gentlemen, bloodthirsty, colonized, enslaved, Murder, all the atrocities that he ever committed. The Edomites today are the wicked of the earth. And it is important to know they rule with a sword and they are extremely greedy and will take everything and leave others with nothing. Here we are told about the nature of Esau. He is never satisfied. Esau is Satan's children. Listen, listen to me. Satan's children. Satan is the God of this world, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 4 and 3. He has children. And these are his chosen people. Lucifer, chosen race, chosen people. Out of all the people in the world, all the people on earth, he chose them. He chose Japheth out of, out of Shem, Ham, Japheth. He chose Japheth as his prized possession, the apple of his eye. And they are wealthy, ladies and gentlemen. Matter of fact, I said it before, 1% of the world's population controls 95% of the world's wealth. Esau, Esau. European Jews are Esau. The Jews are white. They, they own Hollywood. They own the music industry. They own the sports industry. All the, most of all the professional uh, uh, football teams and basketball teams and hockey teams and baseball teams are owned by white Jews, European Jews. They are wealthy people. Hollywood is owned by European Jews. They white. The, the producers, the directors in, in Hollywood and the producers in the music industry is controlled by those people. They got this world on lockdown, ladies and gentlemen. They have all the, they own the banks. They own the banks, they own the land. They own the wealth of this world, ladies and gentlemen. They have it, they have it. They're Satan's children. Jeremiah 49 and nine, look what it says here. They, they take everything and don't leave nothing for no one else. Look at Jeremiah. And I'm not racist. I'm just telling y'all the truth. I know when you, you preach like this and you speak like this and you tell the truth, the cry is, he's a racist. He's biased. He's racist. He's a black supremacist. He's a hate monger. I know what they say. Because when you tell the truth, you're a hate monger, ladies and gentlemen. But look what it says in Jeremiah 49 and 10. But I have made Esau bare. I have uncovered his secret places. And he shall not be able to hide himself. His seed is spoiled, a mingling among the nations. And his brethren and his neighbors, and he is not, ladies and gentlemen. Look at verse 9. If grape gatherers come to thee, would they not leave some gleaning grapes? If these by night, they will destroy till they have enough. 
ladies and gentlemen. He's, Yahweh's saying even a thief, he'll leave something. Even if someone come in and steal your, your, your vineyards, your grapes, they'll leave the gleanings, but not Esau. Esau ain't leaving nothing. He taking everything for himself. Look what he did to Africa. He raped the land, took the natural resources, the minerals, took everything. He, he went all over the world taking from everybody, ladies and gentlemen, taking slaves, built up the U United States of America, free labor off of the backs of slaves, never had to pay them. He got rich, became a superpower, the wealthiest nation on the earth today, stealing, confiscating, pillaging, ladies and gentlemen, sacking, just taking, raping, enslaving, oppressing. That's his nature. Scripture says, he shall live by the sword, and Esau is living by the sword. His descendants today live by the sword, which the sword today is weaponry, guns, rifles. Ladies and gentlemen, glory to Yahweh. Remember, the Edomites were conquered by the Romans, and they became one nation. Remember that? One kingdom. One people, the Roman Empire stretched over most of Europe. Remember now, the Roman Empire stretched over most of Europe. And the Romans, what did they do? They assimilated it. They planted their seed. They uh, spread it, they wild oats all over the provinces. provinces the colonies, colonies that they rule over from, from Britain all the way to Iraq, ladies and gentlemen, even North Africa. That's most of all of Europe, ladies and gentlemen. And the Edomites and the Romans was one. They became one. So the Romans and the Edomites was one people, ladies and gentlemen. The Romans assimilated among most of Europe. Not all of Europe, but most of Europe. The Romans, according to the word of Yahweh, were called the worst of the heathens. Can I read it to you? The Romans was the worst. Yahweh called the Romans the worst of the heathens. And if you know anything about world history, you know anything about the ancient Roman Empire, you see how ruthless those people was, treacherous. They would kill their wives. They would kill their children. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, if they felt threatened, they would kill their own children. They killed their wife. And their children would kill them. The wives would kill their, their, their husband, the emperor. Uh, a Roman emperor, ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> uh, his, his, his span that he reigned was about, what, three, four months because he, he had to watch his back at all times. Those people was ruthless. He had to watch his back at all times. The Praetorian Guard, his own guard would, could kill him, ladies and gentlemen. I wouldn't want to be an emperor, ladies and gentlemen, because your life <coughs> did not last long when you became him because you had enemies everywhere. Everybody was conspiring against you. Everybody was undermining you. Everybody was trying to take your position. People was envious, jealous of your own family members, your own children, ladies and gentlemen. They were ruthless people. You see how they go out and they conquered it. Oh, man, they were some ruthless people. And Yahweh called them the worst of the heathens. They were worse than the Babylonians. They was worse than the, the Medes and the Pers. They was worse than the Greeks. They was worse, ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> Then the Egyptians, the Assyrians, they worshiped all these mighty and powerful countries in ancient times. They was worse. You know, the Greeks would go in and they would spare people's lives. You know, they set up colonies and the Romans, amen, sometimes they go in and kill everybody in the city, everybody in the town, everybody in that area. 
ladies and gentlemen. They were just ruthless people. Glory to Yahweh. Now, <clears throat> the Bible tells us in the book of Ezekiel that the Romans were the worst of the heathens. You couldn't get no worse than these people. You couldn't get no worse than these people. You're talking about Satan's children. You couldn't get no worse than these people. They, they lived by the sword. The Edomites was they was ruthless. Look what it says in Ezekiel 7 and 21. And I will give it unto the hands of the strangers, talking about Jerusalem, the city of Jerusalem, for a prey into the wicked of the earth as a spoil, and they shall pollute this. This is what the Romans did. In, in, in 70 AD, they, they, they uh, destroyed the temple that was there. They destroyed Judea and surrounding areas. They, they slaughtered over a million uh, Israelites, ladies and gentlemen. They enslaved the rest. Look what it says. It says, and they shall pollute it. They defiled the temple. They desecrated the temple in the temple mount. It says, my face will I turn also from them. And they shall pollute my secret places, the holy temple, the holy place, the holies of holies. For the robbers shall enter in into it and defile it. These are the Romans. <clears throat> Make a chain for the land, a full of bloody crimes, and the city is full of violence. Whoa. They live by the sword. Wherefore, I will bring the worst of the heathen. Here go the Romans. The worst of the heathens, and they shall possess their houses. I will also make the pump of the strong to cease, and their holy places shall be defiled. They're going to defile the synagogues, the temple there, amen, in Judea. Glory to Yahweh. So the Romans was the, the Edomites and the Romans became one people. They was the worst of the heathens. They was the worst of the heathens, ladies and gentlemen. There was no one else worse than these heathens. In the book of Jazwer, uh 10 and 16 declares, and the children of Shechem are the Romans. It says it. Now, some of you may frown on me because I uh, I'm reading out of the the book of Jazwer. But the, if you go in the book of Second, uh, let me read it to you. In the book of Second uh, Samuel, chapter one, it talks about the book of e e uh, um, Enoch too. Amen. But but here in the book of uh, Samuel, look what it says. Second Samuel chapter uh, one, glory to Yahweh. And it says in verse 18, also he bade them teach the children of Judah the use of the bow. Behold, it is written in the book of Jazer. So I'm using the book of Jazer today from the Apocrypha. Roman Catholic Church, they felt like they didn't want these uh, books to be in the Bible. So they didn't canonize, amen, the book of Jazer. For, for some reason, they kept it out. But I'm going to read out of the book of Jazer. Jazer chapter 10, verse six, 16 declares, And the children of Shedom, the Romans, are the, it says, The children of Shedom are the Romans who dwell in the valley of Canopia, which is Europe, by the river of Tiber, the Tibris, ladies and gentlemen. Look, we see it right in the scripture. They dwelt in the valley of Canopia, which is Europe, by the river uh, Tiber, ladies and gentlemen. Now, there's another point I want to bring out. You know, when you read in the book of Genesis, when it talks about um, uh, Esau's lineage, and it talks about the first kings in Israel came through the lineage of Esau, and they called them Dukes, you read it in the Bible, Duke this one, Duke this one, Duke this one, Duke this one. Now, what area of the world, what region of the world still use Dukes? Huh? You, you guess it. Over there in Great Britain, right now in Europe, in France, different places, they still use Dukes. Because, see, the Edomites assimilated amongst the Europeans. They became one people. They became one 
people, ladies and gentlemen, praise Yahweh. And so they brought some of their customs, their culture, and assimilated among the European culture, ladies and gentlemen. It was incorporated together. So dukes, you read in the book of Genesis, you'll see this. Now, what areas did the Romans conquer? As we try to close this message. When the Romans conquered Europe, what areas did they conquer? Austria, Bohemia, France, Germany, the Netherlands, Belgium, Luxembourg, Greece. Amen. They had Italy because they that's where they their base was in Italy. Uh, Spain and Portugal, they conquered those areas. Sweden and even Great Britain. Amen. The United Kingdom, ladies and gentlemen. They conquered these places. Now, this is where Edom is today. These nations I just called off, this is where Edom is. Now, the Anglo-Saxons are the cream of the crop when it comes down to the Europeans, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, uh, UK, Germany, France, and those areas, ladies and gentlemen. The Netherlands, the Anglo-Saxons. Who created the United States of America? Anglo-Saxon. See, all Caucasians ain't the same. They are not all white people not the same. You have, you have uh, uh, Caucasians in East uh, uh, Europe. You have them in West Europe. You have them in the Northern part of Europe. And you have them in Southern Europe. Ladies and gentlemen, Anglo-Saxons was mostly in the West, Northwest part of Europe, ladies and gentlemen. And they are the ones that uh, founded the United States. They established the United, George Washington, Benjamin Franklin, those was Anglo-Saxons. And most of the people there in the U.S. today are Anglo-Saxons. The, the British, the Scottish, ladies and gentlemen, those are Anglo-Saxons. And most uh, black people uh, in the U.S., they have the slave name, from what? The Scottish and the British. Huh? From the English. We all have English, English names. Scottish names, ladies and gentlemen. The English, Anglo-Saxon name. Here in, here in Africa, here in Kenya, most of the people here in Kenya have Anglo-Saxon names. They have Anglo-Saxon names, ladies and gentlemen. Their first names are Anglo-Saxon, the same names that people in England have today. Same names, same exact name, because we know the English came and colonized, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Kenya and other parts of Africa. The French, the Germans, the Portuguese, the Spain, Spanish, the Italians, the Dutch, ladies and gentlemen, these people, amen, colonized. Amen. Africa. Praise the name of Yahweh. But Australia, Bohemia, France, Germany, Netherlands, Belgium, Luxembourg, Greece, Italy, Portugal, Spain, Sweden, United Kingdom. These are the, the countries that the ancient uh, Romans uh, conquered. And they became a part of their provinces, their colonies, ladies and gentlemen. And Edom was mixed all with these people. They mingled. We read the scripture how she would mingle. She would mingle, amen, with these people. She would be spoiled among them, Jeremiah 49 and 10, ladies and gentlemen. And so the Edomites became one with Rome. Rome conquered most of Europe, Northern Africa, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the so-called Middle East, ladies and gentlemen, assimilated amongst those people. These people today rule our earth. These are the people that rule our earth. The U.S., huh? Anglo-Saxon, the U.K., the most powerful countries on the earth today. France, ladies and gentlemen, Canada, Australia. New Zealand, the most powerful uh, countries on planet Earth today. These are Edomites. 
So you want to know who the Edomites are today, ladies and gentlemen? It's the Caucasians. They are the Caucasians. And you remember uh, many of them came over in the, the 20th century, early 20th century. They migrated to the United States, the Italian, the Irish, ladies and gentlemen, and Germans. Amen. With the people that was already settled here. Glory to Yahweh. These are Edomites. They are Edomites. White Jews are Edomites. These are the Edomites today, ladies and gentlemen. So you want to know where Edom is? That's who they are. The ones that rule this world. 1% of the world's population controls 95% of the wealth. My goodness. Praise the name of Yahweh. And he rule, he live by the sword. If this ain't prophecy, I don't know what it is. I don't know prophecy. If this ain't prophecy, I don't know prophecy, ladies and gentlemen. He lives by the sword. Glory to Yahweh. We read it to you in the book of Genesis. Let me read it to you again as I close this broadcast. Genesis 27 and 38 through verse 40 declares, And Esau said unto his father, Hast thou but one blessing, my father? Bless me, even me also, O my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. And, he, and Isaac, his father, answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth. Look at it, the fatness of the earth, prosperity, wealth, the fatness of the earth, not the leanness of the earth, the fatness. See, you're going to have all the gold, the natural resources. You're going to have all the minerals, the precious stones, and of the dew of the heaven from above. You, 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 the land that you're going to have is going to be very fertile for growing crop. And by thy sword, look, shall thy live. You're going to live by that sword. Because you're going to go taking, stealing, amen, pillaging, uh, sacking, ladies and gentlemen, confiscating, stealing, enslaving, raping, murdering, huh? Conquering, and by the sword shall thou live and shall serve thy brother, that's Jacob, and it shall come to pass when thou shalt have dominion. <laughs> Esau has dominion today. The white man has dominion today. The Caucasians have dominion today. That thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. But you're going to break his yoke off his neck. You're going to have dominion, break his yoke. And Esau, the Edomites, have broke the yoke off their neck and they rule and they have dominion today in these end times. But things are going to change. There's coming a new age, friend. And the Bible says the saints shall possess the kingdom. Esau is going to be moved. That fourth kingdom, that fourth kingdom, Ladies and gentlemen, that, that, that beast that was more treacherous than all the other beasts, men, dreadful beasts that went forth and devouring the earth, stamping and devouring the earth, this ferocious, hideous beast, Esau, the fourth kingdom. And then he, he had legs of iron. And feet part iron and part clay. Esau. Esau. He is in control today. Ladies and gentlemen. You know the image that Nebuchadnezzar. Amen. The dream he had. He seen this image. Ladies and gentlemen. What was the foundation of the image? The iron legs. And the iron feet. Part iron. And part clay. Clay, ladies and gentlemen, it was the platform of this, amen, this image that he saw, ladies and gentlemen. Praise the name of Yahweh. But I'm going to close here this evening and thank Yahweh for you tuning in with us once again. 
with another word from Yahweh. Ladies and gentlemen, we we want to go deep in this broadcast. We want to go deep in this broadcast. We, 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 uh, you know, most ministries today, they're surface ministries. But ladies and gentlemen, we want the deep things of Yahweh, ladies and gentlemen. People need to be taught the word of Yahweh. Amen. I was teaching on yesterday. Amen. There's more than a, a third of the Bible. Amen. Well, let me say it like this. Only a third of the Bible today is being taught, being preached. Amen. 70% of it ain't even being preached today, ladies and gentlemen. But we want to deal with the whole counsel of Yahweh, ladies and gentlemen. When we go to most of these churches, they're going to deal with about 26 books. It's 66 books in the in the Bible, friend. Then you have the, the Apocryphers. You have 66 books, and they only deal, most preachers today in the Christian church only deal with 26 books, ladies and gentlemen. Some of them don't even deal with that. But then there's parts of the Bible that they avoid, they neglect. We need the whole role, ladies and gentlemen. We need to eat the whole book. Bless the name of Yahweh. Well, we thank Yahweh for you tuning in with us this evening. We appreciate Yahweh for what he is doing. And Yahweh's willing, we'll see you again, amen, tomorrow at the same time. May Yahweh continue to bless you as I press.